increasing numbers of academic institutions and governments and businesses are taking decisions which seem to be based on the idea that pure science isn't really worth investing in, that they want short-term results from applied science. What's your response to that? Yeah, so that would be disastrous. Just well, It'll be disastrous in ways that you cannot even measure. For example, in the 1920s, a whole frontier of physics was discovered. It was quantum physics. And if perhaps if that same set of legislators were around back then, they would be telling people, they would be telling the academics, why are you studying the structure of what's inside the atom? You can't even see an atom. Who cares about atoms? I'm a woodworker. I don't need to know that atoms comprise wood. It behaves as wood. I'm a steel worker. I know how what temperature it melts. That's all I care about. You are wasting taxpayers' money. Yet 50 years later, yes, it would take 50 years. 50 years later, quantum physics would be the foundation of our information technology revolution. And by some measures, one third of the world's GDP is traceable to the creation, storage, and retrieval of information as we now perform it in the digital era. You could not have predicted it back then. There's, you, you, if you go back to the latter part of the 1920s into the 1930s, Einstein publishes a paper called The Stimulated Emission of Radiation. A really obscure result at the time. Uh, us physicists were deeply interested in it as a, as a phenomenon of physics, but did anyone else care? No. That was the founding paper of lasers. Lasers. What is the laser an acronym for? The light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. The very words in the paper that he published. And we have LASIK surgery. We have Blu-ray compact disc players. We have all of this runs on laser. We have, uh, you can't even begin, barcodes. It's all lasers. And are you saying, no, I don't know how you would ever use this research, so let's not do it, because I have to know right now what the eternal application of this discovery will be? That is short-sighted. And what you are doing is you are burying, you are destroying the seed corn of truly revolutionary science and technology that could take this country into the next century and lead the world. Without it, you will dance the tune played by others who have the insight of how to make those kinds of investments. I wanted to ask you about useless research because uh, we often hear uh, people complaining that you know when there's not much money around, when governments are stretched, when we need new childcare centres and schools and roads and trains, why are we spending money on people who give the job description that you gave us earlier, mm. which is just go and have a look and see what's out there. Um, here's a question actually we had from a caller uh, last week when we were talking to Brian Gainsler about this. Look, uh, look I, I'm you know all for research in in specific areas, but uh, you know I don't see what you know research on black holes and square kilometre array is really going to do in terms of addressing Australia's issues. And Australia's issues are uh, sustainability in, in energy and water and food. What, what, are we, what are we spending money on gazing into the galaxy, which is going to do us no good? Going to do us no hmm. good? Well, there's a very, I mean, a very high precision answer to that uh, with respect to producing energy, for example. So, so if you look back to the turn of the 20th century, then the, the great questions were about the structure of atoms. And Einstein, indeed, was concerned about the structure of space and time. We have talked about that earlier, space-time, mm. speed of light. So, so they were working away. Rutherford from New Zealand, but working in Manchester, was working on the structure of atoms because he was interested. Uh, that led to an understanding, the discovery of the atomic nucleus at the turn of the 20th century, and the discovery of the equation e equals mc squared by Einstein. Together, those give you nuclear power. But even Rutherford, even in the 1930s, said that anyone who thinks that you can use the atomic nucleus to produce energy is talking moonshine. That was his word. <laughs> He's a, quite a rough New Zealander, actually. It's funny to listen to. Right. Um, but so, so the, the point was that so even 10 years before the, well, the atomic bomb, but also nuclear reactors, the, the scientists who'd, who discovered that physics were, thought that it was utterly useless and thought that it was something to do, it, they were just looking at the structure of atoms. And that caller could have said quite sim easily, you know, what's this quantum mechanics? This, what's he, why mm. are you bothered about why, how electrons go around nuclei? 
another example of quantum theory led directly to the transistor. Without quantum theory, which came from trying to understand atoms, you cannot build a transistor. So you wouldn't have the modern world. So, so it, time and again, history shows you that, that trying to understand nature as a goal leads to the most wonderful discoveries that change civilization. But you, you, it's impossible to know which one of those, which bit of that discovery, you know, which bit of that research is going to lead to something useful. It's yeah. literally not possible. Because I mean, Einstein, was, po like, Einstein was interested in space and time. It's the most esoteric stuff mm, of all. Mm. But that physics underpins nuclear power. Mm. Now, you might not like nuclear power, but that's beside the point. The yeah. point is that you can certainly classify nuclear power stations as useful. Mm. And, mm. and that came from people like Einstein. Mm. Uh, well, radio. I mean, the very medium we're using today, uh, radio waves were discovered by Maxwell. people uh, uh, not <laughs> looking to, to, to find some new way of communicating with the world. No, Maxwell was interested in, in unifying electricity and magnetism together. That's what he was up to. And, and he discovered the, the explanation for electromagnetic waves as a result. So, yeah, it, it, it's a complete misunderstanding of the way that we gather knowledge and make inventions. So just, I guess, a final question on that. Politicians like to be in control of the spend, and it feels a little bit uncontrollable to say, you know, well, you, you guys stare at the universe, we'll pay for it. How about we as politicians set you some goals? and you aim towards those. Now, you just said that trying to understand nature is it, it's not like it's that. It's just not possible. I mean, mm. you couldn't have said, if you'd have said to Einstein and Rutherford and all the great the, the scientists around the turn of the 20th century, I would like you to find a new power source. We didn't even know there was such a thing as the atomic nucleus. So there was no... Uh, how, Where would you start? What would you do? You'd, you'd, you'd probably do R&D on coal. Right, actually, because that's what you would have done. There's a very famous quote, actually. You'd never get electric light by doing R&D on a candle. But right, you need someone to go and discover an electron, which somebody did. It was Faraday playing around in London in the 1860s. So, so the, the point is, it is not possible fundamentally to do that. So it, it, more than anything, politicians aren't clever enough. But actually, even more than that, no one is clever enough to know which research. There's another, another example, very quickly, the Nobel Prize... Uh, went to Manchester last year for the discovery of something called graphene. This is made by a friend of mine, Andre Geim, who was, who'd also won the Ig Nobel Prize for levitating frogs. <laughs> right, so he, he's a man who, who is fascinated by nature. He discovered, being fascinated by nature, playing around, by the way, with a piece of sellotape and a pencil, he discovered a new form of carbon, which, which now already there have been transistors made out of it, which are faster than anything you can build out of silicon. It's the strongest material known. There's a, there are ideas you can build airliners, far lighter airliners, stronger airliners, less fuel consumption. So it possibly revolutionise the aerospace industry, the semiconductor industry and the future of civilization by playing around with a pencil and some sellotape. So the, 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 no one, if you'd have said, go away and find something to replace silicon, then nobody would have gone away and discovered graphene. He would have spent his whole time levitating frogs and we yeah. wouldn't have gotten anywhere. <laughs>